Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we're being asked to show that if two to the n minus one is prime for some positive integer n, prove that n is also prime. So I'll just write that out. So we're, we're trying to show that if two to the n minus one is prime, then n is also prime and basically a prime number only has um, two factors. Basically the only only numbers that can divide into it are itself and one. So there's basically no other factors. No other factors other than the number itself and the number one. So three would be a prime number because Apart from 3 and 1, there's no other integer, at least, that can divide into the number 3. So, uh, for this proof, uh, I think uh, uh, an elegant way we can go about this is to use proof by contradiction. So, what we'll do is we'll say if 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, let's assume that n is not prime and see what we get. So let's see what happens if we say two to the n minus one is prime, but n, the integer n is not prime. So what that would mean is we can let n equal x times y, where uh, x is greater than one and y is greater than one. So the reason I say that is, um, if we take the two numbers x and y, we don't want to let either of them be one because then we'd be into this territory where n is just uh, the number itself. Basically, uh, the factors would be one and y is equal to n. So we want both of these numbers to be greater than one to say that n can be represented as two numbers multiplied by each other. In other words, x and y are factors of n and neither of those two numbers are one or n itself. So that's a way we can say that n is not prime. So taking that assumption, let's put that into our uh, prime identity. So uh, two to the n minus one would then become two to the x y minus one, which we could write as two to the x to the power of y minus one. And the reason writing it in this format um, helps us is because now we can use this identity or this result where we can say in general, a to the x minus one can be written as a minus one times a to the x minus one plus a to the x minus two and so on all the way down to a plus one. So that, that's an identity that's going to help us here. If, if you haven't seen it before, um, it's very easy to prove. Um, I mean, you could just expand it. I mean, I'll do that now. If I, if I was to expand this right hand side, we'd get a times a to the x minus one would become a to the x plus a to the x minus one plus a to the x minus two and so on, plus we get a squared plus a, so that's multiplying the a through. And then we get multiplying the minus one through, we get minus a to the x minus one, minus a to the x minus two, and so on. Then we get uh, uh, actually minus, minus a squared minus a minus one, and I've written this kind of offset because then it's easy to see how everything cancels except for the a to the x minus one. So you can see that what's here on the left hand side is equal to what's on the right hand side, very easy to prove. So now what I can do is I can say, well, this kind of a here is two to the x, and then it's a little confusing, but here, x, the exponent is y for us. So now what I can do is I can say um, two to the x to the power of y minus one, I can write as two to the x minus one 
times 2 to the x to the y minus 1 plus 2 to the x to the y minus 2 and so on up to 2 to the x plus 1. Now the reason writing it in this format can help us for this proof is because here we have a factor and actually we can say that since x is greater than 1, which we noted up here, then 2 to the x minus 1 must be greater than 1. So this factor here is not 1 and it's also not um, the, the left-hand side itself. So here we've shown that this left-hand side, 2 to the n minus 1, which is 2 to the x to the y minus 1, when this assumption is made, has a factor that is not the number itself or 1. It's different. So therefore, we have a contradiction since when n is not prime, 2 to the n minus 1 is not prime. But we're, we're starting from the starting point that 2 to the n minus 1 is prime. So we've shown that when um, we want to say that 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, if we don't also have n being prime, we get this contradiction. We, we don't get this, this um, fact anymore. So therefore, if 2 to the n minus 1 is prime, n must also be prime. And that's our proof. So that's our proof by contradiction. So the technique of contradiction, you always have to find, well, what's the thing I'm going to assume that's the opposite? In this case, it was to assume that n is not prime. And then we, we end up proving that 2 to the n minus 1 then can't be prime either, which is a contradiction. So hopefully, hopefully you've um, found that helpful. I think proof by contradiction, it's one of those techniques you just need to practice. I think with more and more practice, you'll get better and better at working out how to state your, your um, I guess, opposite assumption. And then the rest, it's typically just algebra. I think the harder proofs by contradiction require you to make use of fairly esoteric results and it's not always obvious what results um, to use. I think this one jumps out because it's showing something where you're bringing out a factor and because we're dealing with prime numbers and we're trying to show that either there aren't factors or there are if we want to prove the contradiction then that's why this particular result um, you, you know could help you here. So uh, there you have it. Uh, tick boom.